Hey guys, welcome back to another ability discussion video. And uh, the reason why I say ability discussion video is because this originally was going to be a normal scripted video. As you know, I like to cover different subsections of abilities like empowered abilities or uh, death passives and things like that. But um, when I was going to make the long awaited empowered auto attacks video, I realized there's a lot of them. So having to kind of condense all of that into one narrative for a video, a scripted video that I normally do, is just basically unfeasible. So what I decided to do instead was make this video a review of every single empowered auto attack in the game, and I'll format it in a tier list-like fashion. So I hope you're okay with that. I know tier list videos tend to be a little bit less, um, I guess, engaging, or it doesn't have that same kind of flair as my normal content, but at the same time, a few of you did say that you do enjoy when I do more um, ad-lib content, like more improvised content, as opposed to scripting and recording and editing. So I hope you're okay with that. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're, as I said before, we're going to go through every single champion that has an empowered auto attack or something similar, and then rate it on a scale of S, A, B, C tier. There's no like, if I were to be more specific about the tiering, C tier does not necessarily mean it's bad. It's just that compared to the other characters uh, or the other champions, it's not as good. I should also mention that empowered auto attacks tend to be more benign compared to some other abilities and not as obnoxious given the fact that they can only be attached to auto attacks and therefore there's a lot of limitations as to how they can be designed as opposed to let's say Viego passive which the sky's the limit. So with that said, let's begin. First champion is going to be Aatrox with his Deathbringer stance as passive. Uh, I'm putting it in C tier mostly because it's not a bad ability but I feel like, and I've expressed this before, Aatrox is passive kind of is just there. Like, he's an ability caster now. If this was his old version where he had like an empowered auto attack as an auto attacker that he used to be, then I'd be a little bit more lenient about it. But because the bulk of Aatrox's gameplay consists of neutral game slash burst trades and he's a very big ability caster, his Deathbringer stance is kind of just there for the sake of being there. It would have been better if they retained the shield and grievous wounds debuff to make it so like there's a bit more skill expression involved. But for the most part, you kind of just use it whenever it's available to heal and hope you can use it on a champion for more healing. Uh, next auto attack is going to be Akali with the empowered auto attack from a Q. It is based on striking a champion and then using the empowered auto attack to get damage and then weaving it in kind of in between so you don't just spam Q over and over again. Because Q ordinarily has a very short cooldown which would prompt an experienced player to continue spamming Q. But to make most use of it, you want to get the auto attack after. Up next is Alistar, Trample. Trample's stun auto attack I think is one of the better designed uh, empowered auto attacks in the game. It's not like an activated auto attack per se, like there's a condition you have to meet for it, but I, I like it. I think it gave Alistar some much needed follow up because before he got that ability, all he could really do was WQ and that's about it. But now they give E to extend his trade combo to extend his CC duration and it's a good overall fit. I like it. Uh, next champion. So I'm pretty sure Felios has an empowered auto attack somewhere, but uh, I actually don't remember. So I'm going to skip him for this video. I hope you're okay with that. We're going to go straight to Bards. Um, his is not an activated empowered auto attack. It's kind of like Aatrox where it's passive, but I also like it. I think the fact that it makes him more and more of a threat in the later game when it starts doing more damage, it starts to get that cone for AoE damage, and then starts to slow. I love the premise about it, and I think uh, it's a fairly balanced ability, and it's not too powerful, it's not too obnoxious, unless you go like full AP Bard, but that's also a gimmick. So I think it's a pretty pretty solid empowered auto attack. Speaking of a solid one, Blisscrank's Power Fist. It is a follow-up after he uses his power hook, or, or rocket grab rather. Pretty simple, but it gets the job done, and it gives a very cohesive one-two combo. You pull them in, you hook them up, and then you just punch them. You know, the one downside to where I live is that I live near an airport. There's like an airport 20 minutes away. So every afternoon, there's like a ton of airplanes that just come zooming by. And I'm sorry if you hear it in the audio, but I'll try to ignore it. Anyways, uh, continuing on, I think the next champion is going to be Caitlyn. Caitlyn's auto attack, uh, it's her headshot, um, just the headshot passive and all the interactions with it. I like it mostly because to capitalize on Caitlyn's extreme crit scaling damage, you gotta get your normal headshots, and then your trap headshots, and then your net headshots. So I like it. Uh, I would put it in S tier, but I feel like, how do I say? I couldn't really come up with like a good argument to put it in S tier. There's a good amount of skill expression to optimize Caitlyn's DPS, but overall, 
I would say that it's not really something I feel like Caitlyn's cared too much about. For example, the uh, the property of uh, attacking from a bush to get double stacks. Not really, not many Caitlyn's care about that that much. They only rely mostly on the headshot from the trap and the net. Then next is Camille. This will be a very controversial one. You guys know my history with Camille. And a lot of that history comes from her Q. Precision protocol. Now hear me out. Within the confines of her kit, and if we take into consideration the fact that it's her only reliable source of damage, you could sort of justify the fact that it does a lot of damage, but my big issue with Camille's Q is that it's so abusable. The fact that it converts damage means that any semblance of damage that you can get, not just from attack damage, it can be from Spellblade, it can be from on-hit effects, or just in general, makes this attack really freaking broken. Mostly with Divine Sunder, because the percent health damage that Divine Sunder deals then gets converted into max health true damage due to Precision Protocol, and I feel like it's too much power concentrated into a single ability that no matter how much they make her passive, W, E, or ultimate bad, she will still feel like a really unpleasant champion to go up against because her Q is just too good for a single ability, especially with the mana cost and especially with cooldown. I probably don't have as much contempt for it as I used to, but I still think it's a very damning ability to have. You know, it might be exaggerated to some extent, but the reality is Camille's Q is a choke off ultimate with like a small delay on it, but it's compensated by the fact that you can use it over and over again. And I just think that that's like a core reason why people don't like dealing with her and why she feels so obnoxious is because once she gets like one or two items, her Q starts doing 900 true damage and you can't do anything about it because she can dash onto you from five miles away. So I guess in essence, her Q is the root of all of her balance problems, even if she's not currently broken right now. Uh, Shogat's E is, uh, I'll put it in A tier, pretty solid, good for wave clear, it's good for trade damage. Um, you might, maybe actually I might put in B tier because it's just basically damage, it's like you know, an obligatory damaging ability for him to have. Uh, but I like it, I think it's good for kind of the fact that Shogat is a very trade heavy tank. And yeah, nothing much else to say about it. Next is Darius. I'm gonna put it also in B tier, it's an auto attack reset, helps him get an extra stack, helps him slow his opponent so he can continue attacking. Uh, overall, yeah, again, I'm gonna have a pretty quick assessment for many of these because when you look at like how it is for the champion, it's pretty much, it's there to just make it easier for them to execute their combo. Diana's passive, burst passive, you know, you rack it up ahead of time so you can get a really massive burst when you go in. Not too bad, nothing too wrong with it. Mundo, this is like old Mundo's icon, but it's... I'm talking about reworked Mundo. Reworked Mundo, I like his new E. I like it a lot more than the old one. Uh, you can use it to harass in lane. Before, the catch was that you can hide behind minion waves so that Mundo couldn't hurt you, but now even that's dangerous because of uh, his E. Draven's empowered auto attack being his Q, one of the best designed abilities in the entire game. I will die on this hill. I just think that the interaction with having to like catch the axes and then like repositioning yourself in such a way to guarantee more damage is a very skill expressive ability and the payout is justifiably high because it's difficult to do so. Echo's Phase Dive. Pretty good, pretty good ability. I like it, the, the initial dash and then the blink after. Uh, some people are not a fan of it because it's so good at gap closing, but there are a million gap closes in this day and age. Echo's is one of the more mild ones. Okay, then up next will be Fiora. Fiora's blade work, I will say B tier. The initial utility of the first hit uh, slowing his target and then the second hit doing crit damage, like obviously the reason they did that was so that they can, um, or rather so she can get more vitals off in a shorter period of time. Uh, I would have put it in A tier, but it is really kind of just two extra autos in very fast succession of each other, so nothing too exceptional to put it in S or A tier. Next is Fizz, I will put Fizz also in uh, B tier. Just makes his auto attacks hurt a little bit more. Urchin Strike is good for last hitting, uh, but it's really there to just give his Q or W, or rather just auto attacks a bit more kick. Next is GP's Trial by Fire. So I'm generally not a fan of just like passively you deal more damage every so often, like with the whole Aatrox argument, but in Gangplank's case, it is a integral part of his damage rotation, especially when you do auto attack and then barrel, then auto attack again to refresh the burn and then do that again. There's a bit more skill expression involved and I think the interaction is quite fair, especially since you can't proc it with parlay. So you do have to walk up and kind of get damage in. I think it's okay. Next is Garen. It technically should be here, but like Decisive Strike, the uh, Silence is definitely, and or not really the Silence that I think is what makes it a good ability. I think it's the fact that you can break out of slows with it. 
So if you time it correctly, you can break out of, let's say, Nastus W, you can break out of uh, Ash Volley, or anything with a really heavy slow, like even an Urgot ultimate. If he hits you with Urgot ultimate, then you press Q, you can still run away. I think it's, uh, there's a bit more room for expression, even if it's just, you know, a big whack with a sword. Up next is going to be Galio, uh, C tier. The Colossal Smash, it's there because he needs a form of damage, but at the same time, they could have done that in some other way. I think it's a pretty boring ability to have. For Diana's case, again, the skill expression evolved with like... And when I say skill expression, I don't mean like some super crazy mechanical outplay. I mean just the fact that it's not available by existing, that you gotta like auto attack, you can set it up beforehand, whereas for these champions, it kind of is just there. Aatrox, yes, the skill expression of lowering the cooldown of his passive by landing Qs is there, but he's a different case because it just doesn't tie very well within his abilities, I guess. Uh, Gragas, I would say 8th tier. Good for AoE clear, good damage. Uh, it's good for trades, you can use it to reduce a little bit of damage, and yeah, basically, pretty good ability. I like it. Next is Hecarim. I like it. I like it. It's very thematic to his design, he charges at you and then that initial strike does a bunch of damage and knocks people back, it adheres to the laws of physics, it talks about momentum, and it's a pretty good part of his kit, it's a reason why a lot of people like to play him. Alawi, B tier. Bit of interaction with their tentacles, I think it is kind of a, it's like Darius almost, where it just makes it easier for, to, for her to do her job. I might put it in A tier, but I think I'll just keep it in B tier for now. Next one's going to be Jarvan, C tier. Same argument as Galio, it's there because he needs a form of damage, but I feel like they could have designed it in a better way, because he's not really... I mean, he auto-attacks because of Demacian Standard, but j 4s kid's just outdated in general. Jax, B tier. Very simple. He's an auto-attacker, the W reset to make him attack faster, get more Grandmaster my stacks. That's it. Jace is also going to be B tier, the empowered auto attack from his uh, transformation. So every time he switches to Mercury Hammer, it does more magic damage, and every time he switches to Cannon, it reduces resistances. I'm mostly referring to the armor and magic as a shred on his Cannon. If you do it correctly, you can get a lot of damage on this champion. But people who don't, don't do that much. Now, this champion doesn't really have an empowered auto attack in the form of like what many people would expect, but I do consider his fourth shot to be an empowered auto attack and I'm heavily biased in favor of Jin, so S tier, no arguments. Cassidin, Netherblade, B tier, just, you know, a little bit of damage, restores some mana. It's not a great ability, but it's not a bad one. Kale, again, it's there because it's like the Jax principle where, I mean, in the early game, it's good to give her like a ranged auto attack, but when she becomes ranged, it's just there to help her build lethal tempo, help her build her whatever her passive is called, and just do a bit more damage. Cannon's auto attack with the um, the passive auto attack he gets every like four hits or so. Uh, I don't know if you want to call that a three hit a passive. I don't know if you would call that a three hit passive or an empowered auto attack, but for the sake of this video, it's an empowered auto attack. I think it's a good A tier. Helps you kind of set up. It's like kind of the Diana principle where you set it up ahead of time. But in unlike Diana, Cannon's W applies an electricity stack, which matters a lot for getting stuns, trades, things like that. Kled. Violent Tendencies is a pretty- is I called it a badly designed ability, but I suppose for Kled's case, like the way he likes to use it, is uh, probably, probably put it B tier, maybe? Or we can do A tier, I guess. No, I'll keep it in B tier, I'll stay to my word. It's not like a C tier ability because there is some skill expression involved, so I guess we'll leave it there. Oh yeah, I guess we can put Cossacks as well. Uh, Cossacks is going to be B tier, his passive empowered auto attack from uh, Unseen Threat or whatever his passive is. It gives you an incentive to go invisible more often, to go into brushes, things like that. And uh, pretty good. Actually, yeah. I think Cossacks would be here. Next is going to be, let's go down the list, Lucian. It speaks volumes to kind of the playstyle of Lucian in general, and uh, I don't think many people would disagree. I might put it A tier at, at worst, but it's definitely up here, one or the other. I think Lightslinger is a very engaging ability. Ultimately, yes, you just kind of ability, then Lightslinger, then ability, then Lightslinger again, kind of like Riven or like Silas, but you know, it, I still think it maybe it's a little bit more important for him because they actually apply on hit effects to their target multiple times. Malphite. 
It's there. There's damage. I mean, the armor is nice, but really it's just there to give him a form of damage. Unlike Galio or Aatrox or J4, you have to activate it so you can time it for a trade and you can use it at your discretion. So it's okay. Next is going to be Nasus. C tier. Okay, hear me out. Yes, a siphoning strike is the essence of Nasus, but realistically speaking, it's also the source of all of his problems. It's garnered a reputation for many reasons and the history that it carries, but as, a, as an ability, I think Siphoning Strike is ass. It needs to be switched out, rework Nasus, do something else. It just incentivizes people to do nothing but just smash Q spam over and over again. They need to do something different with this ability. It's not a good ability at all. Next up is Nocturne, Umbral Blades. Same reason as Galio, J4, Aatrox. It's a passive. Every so often, your next attack does something more. Yes, you can reduce the duration by using auto attacks on it, but really, I feel like the AoE component of it is just there to give Nocturne some semblance of wave clear or damage because ultimately his kit is meant to be a single target assassination, and Umbral Blades doesn't really fit that principle that much. Next is Quinn's Harrier. I'm going to move Quinn's Harrier into maybe 8 tier. So similarly to the other champions, um, it gives, or what's it called? Uh, there's the, the every so often your attack does more damage, but it's dependent on the target, right? It's not like always available. And then you have your E and then your Q, which can enhance the damage of it. Not to mention, the more Harrier procs you get, the more attack speed you can get overall, and the more movement speed you can get overall. I hate Quinn, but I do respect her passive. I think it's one of the better passively enhances auto attack damage every so often abilities, because there is interaction with it, and to make the most out of Quinn, you do have to make use of it a lot. Next is, um, well, with Kiana's count, not really, it's just like a little bit of bonus damage, it's just whenever she gets an element, but I guess we'll skip that. Uh, Rek'Sai, Queen's Wrath, it's there, you know, it's just damage to just be there, right? Like how else could they design damage on a champion like her? Not great, not bad. Uh, Renekton Stun, A tier, I would put it in S tier, but it is also kind of a it's a point and click auto attack stun, right? There's not as much interaction. Yes, you have point and click stun, or I guess point and click knock up with Blitzcrank or Alistar, but in Renekton's case, yeah, there's more skill expression with Renekton stun than Blitzcrank's knock up, that's for sure. But I feel like in Renekton's case, it's too easy to use, and I say that as someone who plays Renekton a lot, it's too easy to use, and that's also why he's such a problem in pro play, is because it's too easy to use. And um, I hope that if they rework him anytime soon, they will make it a bit more difficult or more skill expressive to use because he's pretty he's pretty stat checky kind of like an anti-carry champion yeah i'll put in a tier for now okay i know riven has technically empowered auto attacks i'll just put in in b tier it's just damage right like eh i mean you need it like you gotta weave in auto attacks to get the most out of your damage but i'll just put in b tier b tier is sort of the tier i would put a an ability in where it's like I don't have many problems with it but I also don't think that it outperforms anything or it doesn't stand out in any exceptional way. Rengar's Q, same thing, damage. There's the interaction with an empowered Q that you can get multiple empowered Qs at once or like whatever selection you want to choose but ultimately it is just damage. Continuing on we have set. I will put it in B tier. I might put it in A tier for the simple fact that like you can rotate your combos in, but I don't think it's in that much different from like Jax with auto attack reset or Kale. So I'll put it in B tier. Shaco, backstab. I like it. I like the interaction with it. It's very fitting for his type of like his background, his lore and everything. And uh, the fact that you quite literally have to be behind someone to proc it is cool because it plays into his whole ability to sneak behind enemy lines and damage you. I like it. Then we have Shen, S tier. I love it. It's a really cool ability and the way you get the empowered versions or the way you use it to trade and how it interacts with this passive, it's a very good ability, very well designed ability. Shivana is down in C tier. I say this because it would normally be in similar to like Jax or Gale where it's just to like apply on hit effects or to reset, but lately Shivana players don't even use it. They just go torpedo Shivana and she's going to get reworked and I hope they give her something a bit more different because it's kind of a lame ability to have for someone who's a half dragon, if you think about it. Sivir's Ricochet, A tier, good for wave clear. Some people didn't agree with the change to make it from a toggle ability that costs mana per auto attack to now just you can only use it three times, but after the mid scope update they gave to her, I think it's in a pretty good spot. Silas, 
B is just damage that needs to be there to like kind of ex accentuate his trade combo similar to Riven. Next is going to be Tarek, Bravado, uh, A tier. It's similar to Riven and Silas where it just makes him do a little bit more damage but because of the cooldown reset mechanic I like it a bit more. Moving on, Trundle, B tier, damage, and just did there for damage to make you hit more, I guess. You'll see that kind of with a lot of abilities. Twist of Fate, gold card, or red card, gold card, blue card. Probably one of the most emblematic auto attacks in the game, and it's one of the best designed abilities, in my opinion, in the game. Yes, most of the time people just default to gold card, but you know, the red card's good for wave clear, the blue card's good for sustain, and it also does a lot of damage too. Udir. Even after the rework, the auto attacks themselves, like I guess it depends, you know, there's Q, W, E, R, W, E, R, Q. I guess rounding it out, I'll just put it at B tier. I think it's just his auto attacks do more stuff, which is, again, kind of falls in line with Darius. It falls in line with uh, Malphite, things like that. It's okay. Moving on, we have a vein, Tumble. Uh, tumble auto attack reset, good for repositioning, for sidestepping, and your auto attacks do a little bit more. Viego, B tier. That's about it. Just Silas and Riven argument again. It's just instead of passively attached to him, it's attached to whoever he's attacking. Victor, I will put it in uh, B tier as well. Kind of just a little bit more damage to put in there. And uh, that's about it. Uh, who's next? Vi, I like excessive force. Is that what it's called or did they change it to something else? Uh, I believe they changed the name of her E and ultimate because it used to be excessive force and assault and battery, but then they changed, I think they changed her ultimate to cease and desist because of the, uh, roughly around the time the whole like police brutality issue came about, um, in 2020, but, uh, whatever her E is, I like it. It's a really cool ability, gives her like a very massive, uh, titanic hydra burst, which can be good for lane, it can be good to harass, you can also just get a lot of damage in, it's not bad. Volley Bear, Thundering Smash. It is a, I know I put Udir in B tier and the Volibear in A tier, but with Volibear he has an interesting interaction where the cooldown can reset if you interrupt it, so if you time it correctly you can actually extend the duration of his Q, which I like. Also in Udir's case he just gets like perma movement speed, whereas for Volibear he has to be running towards targets. Wukong, B tier I guess, it's damage. It has an armor break, so you want to like dash in, armor break, and then use your ultimate and all that stuff. It has the interaction that lowers the cooldown whenever you deal damage to a target, but otherwise B tier. It's just a generic auto attack reset. Xinjiao, A tier. 3 hit active type deal, which is similar to cannons, but more on an active, I guess. There are a couple cool interactions you can do with this ability. It has obviously the cooldown reduction, but you can do you know, Q1, Q2, and then dash into someone to get the Q3 by surprise. What else is there? York, uh, B tier. It's there because it has to be there, uh, and it would be harder to conceptualize another way to get Graves on the ground without his Q. So even though I don't think it's a fantastic ability, it is also hard to come up with an alternative. Oh my goodness. The one downside to these tier list videos is that I have to record everything in one take and my throat kind of gets to my throat a bit. Uh, we're almost done though. What else is there? Zed, C tier. Similar to the other champions. Now I know in his case he has an activation clause where they have to be under half HP, but they could obviously do something different. He's such a skill expressive assassin, and I know the passive is there to allow some consistency in his damage output, but I feel like they could have reworked his passive to be something more engaging, like uh, if let's say, if Zed and his shadow connect, you know, let's say they connect two shadow slashes or two shurikens, then it like reduces the target's armor or something like that. They could have done something, so many different things for his passive that synergized better with his abilities, but they didn't. And I think that's about it actually. Them, yeah, that's everybody. No one else here has an empowered. I, oh, Zoe does. Um, no, no, wait, no, no, no it's not spell thieves. It's uh, it's the uh, sparkles. Yeah, B tier. Just Silas and Riven thing again. Basically, that's about it. All right, uh, that should be all. I think that's everybody. Um, I know some of you might be thinking, what about Lux or Cassante? Because if you're putting Viego, then why not them? So I guess we can do that. Lux, we'll put in... Yeah, we'll put Lux in B tier and Cassante also in B tier. It's just damage for the sake of damage. 
So there you have it, that's the list. Uh, I probably missed at least like one or two of them, but also bear in mind I'm not considering abilities that are abilities with on hit effects, for example Nidalee and their Q. You know, any like ability or spell that applies on hit effects. I'm mostly referring to like an empowered auto attack specifically. But let me know what your thoughts are on my selection in the comments down below and if you agree or disagree with my points. Aside from that, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Varserum, join my Discord server, and check out my other ability discussions if you haven't yet. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, I really appreciate it. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.